Guy, first of all, yeah, you're the new Glens boss. Mm -hmm. There's pressure there. Are you happy the fact that you're the Glen Torn boss? Oh, I'm, I'm over the moon, Adrian. I, I don't want to steal Big Sam's thunder and say I haven't can't wipe that smile off my face, but it has very much been a case like that. You know, it's uh, I have to pinch myself every now and again to to uh, check myself that that I actually am a Glen Torn boss. It's a huge honour and it's one that's not lost on me. You know, it's it's a huge responsibility to get the club back to where I know where the Glen's always where they've always been and where they belong. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've I've loved every second of being the Glen Torn manager so far. You're steeped in sport all throughout your career. You mentioned the fact that you went to England, you came back, you've been heavily involved in sport. Mm -hmm. And in your role, in your own professional role as a sports facilitator mm -hmm. here in Belfast, tell us about that. Yeah, well, I work for BCSDN, a Belfast Community Sports Development Network. Uh, we, we do a lot of work around empowering youth and upskilling young people and, and giving them the opportunity to to gain qualifications through sport. You know, not every kid that they're coming through school is academically that way engaged. The, the sport element is something that came from the same background as myself. It's something that I, I desperately wanted to be involved in all my life, some sort of sporting uh, career. Uh, and we provide the opportunity by upskilling them, giving them opportunities now that they gain sports qualifications and, and hopefully employment through that. We run like a sheer skills program, which is fantastic. You know, we, we tie into kids who maybe are going to leave school in fifth year with limited education. And um, through the sheer skills program, they gain qualifications uh, and uh, and hopefully in that they're through employment and through summer schemes and, and, and different uh, wee projects that, again, coming back and volunteering with us and coming back into our company. You know, some of the guys who actually work for us have, have came through the sheer skills program and then end up working for the company, which which is, is full circle for us, obviously. But we, we, we work all across the town. So we do, we work across um, the Belfast, Great Belfast area, but we're, we're further afield as well. We do a lot of uh, programs for like TBOC, together building United Communities, um, across community elements about bringing clubs together. Uh, we, we do the bags program for Sport NI at the minute where we, we get groups coming in from all different clubs and we get to share the practice. So a Gaelic club can work with a football club and how can they cross over? An athletics club and that there obviously can work with just about every club. You know, So we ask the athletics guy, can you go down and do a wee session with the football club? Can you do a wee session with the rugby club? Can you do a wee one? And they all kind of share each other's skills, which is a fantastic programme. It's all about learning. And Absolutely. it's all about uh, the process of showing that there is a way through sport as well for everybody to learn and to achieve and to improve. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the sport ha has, has been my whole life, you know, and it's created opportunities for me. It's, I think a lot of people out there, school just isn't for them, you know, and going down that route. But the sports element really brings out personality in people because uh, you have to stand up, you have to show leadership. And there's so many different skills that you actually develop through sport that you can take into everyday life. You know, I think um, that, yeah, this sport just opens so many doors. I wouldn't have got, I didn't come from money as per se. Like, I mean, I didn't get the opportunities probably. We had great childhood and that there, and I'm not getting my childhood, but we had, we had great fun growing up. Holidays for us was going to Malay and stuff, and as a family, it was fantastic. But football opened up doors for me to go to Azerbaijan and go to Holland and go to Belgium and go to France and go to space. As a 15, 16 year old of age, through sport, through my football, you know, in Northern Ireland and different things. And the doors that opened up for me was opportunities I never thought would ever be available to someone like myself. So um, I've embraced it, I've enjoyed it, like you mean, and it's now, there's opportunities now for these kids and stuff through sport that opens up so many doors for them. Is that, I presume that enthusiasm and those leadership qualities and all the things you, you spoke about there was something you brought with your CV to the Oval as well, yeah. and they clearly were impressed enough to give you the position. Yeah, I, I can't thank the board enough for, for seeing something in me in that way to mean that they wanted to bring forward and, and, and take the club forward. Um, I'm certainly enthusiastic about the opportunity. You know, I, I, I genuinely don't believe anybody will work harder to try and bring back success. And that I, I love doing what I do. I live and breathe it like so I do. You know, my, my family are hugely supportive of me for that, which they need to be because it is, it's time consuming, but it's time I actually love doing, you know. Uh, it's a fantastic opportunity for me, obviously, and for my family too. You know, we, they, they've come and supported the afforded me too. And they're all Glens fans now, because that has to be the way it has to be. You know, they have to get on board with it and they have to feel part of it, because your family life and out there does take up a big, big commitment of your time. But um, they know what it means to me to, to manage this club and uh, and they're the fully behind me. So I love every second of it. It's great when you go for the job, you work hard, and then suddenly, bang, you get the phone call. You've got the job, yeah. and with that comes pressure because Glen Torn 
Uh, they may have slipped in recent times, but they're mm -hmm. still Glen Torn. They're a big crowd. There's a big history there. There's mm -hmm. a big tradition. There's pressure. Yeah, oh, absolutely. There's pressure in every position, every walk of life, no matter what you do. You know, no more pressure on me than there is a guy trying to earn ends meet to provide for his family. You know, it's it's, it's pressure is what you make of it. Like you know, what I mean, I I enjoy the pressure. Like in terms of the pressure from within to succeed. You know, I want to be a success, and and I don't, I don't really get too much external pressure. I don't feel it as much now there, to be honest, rather than the pressure I put on myself. Um, I know how hard I want to work to get the success, and I'm a big believer in obviously the harder you work at anything that you do, then, then the luckier you'll get and the more successful you, you give yourself a chance of being. But um, yeah, it's, 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 a f it's such a big club. I don't think you realize just how big it is until you're actually in amongst it, and you see so many people doing so many things behind the scenes. Um, they all want the same thing though, they're all pushing in the same direction and I think that's something I've brought to it as well as maybe giving it a little bit of a lift and a wee bit of enthusiasm but the potential was there, like I, I, I didn't go into this here with my eyes shot, I went in and did my homework, I went and watched six, seven, eight games before I actually even got to the interview process whenever the job then came available, I went and watched games, I seen where I thought was lacking, I I seen what I thought was good. You know, there was good points. There was negative points. You know, otherwise I wouldn't have been offered the job in the first place mm -hmm. if there wasn't. I seen areas not there where I felt I could I could improve the team, and I went in and I was just honest with everything that I said to the board, and I I don't say things I don't believe I can deliver on, and and, and it's up to me to make sure I do uh, to justify the, their faith in me. Have the players responded to you? Are they buying into your vision for Glentorn? Mm -hmm. I think they're they're a good bunch of lads. Yeah, I do. I believe are they, they good are. Enough, but yeah, absolutely. They're good enough. They have to believe that first and foremost, dude. And I think too for too long, you know, they maybe just lost that little bit of belief. And and that happens whenever you don't win games and momentum just fades away. And and it's a very very tough cycle to break. But they broke that cycle. Obviously, you know, we were desperately unlocking. I only got the job in the first. They were desperately unlocking out to take something from that Linfield game on the Saturday. We built on it with a point at Ballin Mallard where we were a little bit flat in terms of the performance, but. I maybe pulled my hand up myself and said I probably overtrained them that week. They probably did a little bit too much, and then they were slightly jaded on the Saturday. But then off the back of it, you're done, Ghana. We took points off them down there. Robbery, <laughs> sure, robbery. Tell it to. <laughs> <laughs> we we took the points off Don Ghana down there whenever they were flying. So we did. We we took points off Cliftonville whenever they're been flying as well. So that's only going to help with the belief. And you can't overlook it massively the, the the sheer numbers of injuries that we have and, and quite bad injuries at that. You know. Stevie Michael Orm is one that's always very close to coming by, but he's been a big player for the club since he signed. Um, we're missing him. We're missing Willie Garrett, who's just done a cruciate game, who's been a bad loss, who's potentially one of the best centre-halves in the Irish League. You're missing Steve O'Flynn, who's a star striker who came in, hopefully to get us goals and, and be a foil for, for the other players that we have. You know, Stevie's been out, he's tore a tendon in his groin, so he has. You know, uh, David Scullion has a tear in his hip flexor, so he has. Jay McGee's been out with a bit of a hamstring. Curtis had an operation recently in his mouth to, to take care of a, a long-standing abscess that he's had in his mouth, you know. So these are six, seven, eight players who would walk into most first teams, you know, in the Irish League, or certainly kind of provide them a good option. I would love to have them boys back, but the boys that have been playing have been given the opportunity, and they're showing that they want to stay at the club. You know, I keep on re reinforcing it and forcing it. Once you leave a club like Glentorn, there's not many clubs like it, you know what I mean? There's not many clubs who provide what the club provide for them or, and, and the following that we get and the fan base that we have and the support that you get around the ground and stuff. And, you know, they, they can't hide, Adrian. They've got to be big enough to fill that shirt. You know, the shirt, uh, take a Jock Steen one, the shirt will not shrink to fit inferior players. You know, it's something that stayed with me for a long time. You know, like you have to be big enough to, to handle that sort of pressure. But it's up to me to kind of maybe take the pressure a little bit off the boys and let them just enjoy playing and let them go out and, and work as hard as they can. You talk about the shirt and the uh, inferior players and players uh, trying to fill the shirt and you inherited uh, Nacho mm -hmm. and uh, struggled, fair enough to say, and uh, he said himself that his fitness levels weren't that good. What do you think of him now, honestly? Because some fans and some critics and pundits think that he hasn't been a good fit for Glen Torn, mm -hmm. and yet uh, he's going to be here, as far as I can see, for the foreseeable mm -hmm. future. What do you think about him? I think a lesser person might have walked away from it and, and, and not fancied the criticism and not fancied the work and everything else and might have tucked tail and ran back to Scotland or anything else, but that's just got more about him than that. I have to say from the DNR I've seen for the club, I've had more questions about Nacho than any other player, like so I have in truth. But you know that comes with with the with the expectation on on him as well. 
he, I think he said himself he probably wasn't in the best physical condition he could be. But since I've come in over the last three and a half uh, weeks, months, uh, the three and a half, four months, uh, four weeks, sorry, um, he's worked incredibly, incredibly hard. You know, his attitude and the, and the training grounds first class. Like, but I keep on saying to him, he, he needs to keep working hard in order to gain the minutes. Like, he has to prove himself in that there. Like, again, it doesn't matter what you've done, it's what you do, you know, it's what matters. Uh, so he's being judged on it. You know, he's had a stellar career throughout his, his time in football. Uh, he, he deserves a lot of respect for that. Like, but, but people are quick to forget that. Like, when they'll, they'll judge you on your next performance and your last performance, and that's what sticks. And he's shown the right attitude. And on Saturday, was reward for the three and a half weeks he did before previous. You know, he, he only gets the opportunity, you know, because he's earned it. You know, at the end of the day, he's had a lot of stick, like, do you know what I mean? But the, he needs a car at two, and, and the goal on Saturday will be the one that kind of hopefully drives him forward and drives him on. He's desperate to prove himself. You know, he, I don't think people see the, the work that Nacho does behind the scenes, like I say, and a lot of things that he does. You know, he's, he's a very kind-hearted guy. So he does, does a lot of things in that day. Of, I know it's Rangers-related, like he does, but he's doing a lot of work for the Glens too, behind the scenes, helping promote the club and everything else, you know, and... Ultimately, he has to portray the right image, and, and he, he's doing that. He's, he's lost a, a little bit of weight. Like People went on that there, the perception that he was carrying a lot of weight. And that day, he wasn't, he wasn't carrying mountains and mountains of weight. Like, I mean, it wasn't the case, but he has. He's taken that on board. He's slimmed down. He's hungry to prove himself. And, and he's, his work rate on Saturday was fantastic, but the goal really was, was what he's there to provide. Not like, and, and it was great technique. Ball come over his shoulder, and it was a great finish. I suppose uh, the focus on him shows you what the focus is like to be a Glen Torn boss, and you mm -hmm. would know that. So, are you here this season to steady the ship, mm -hmm. or what are your ambitions for Glen Torn for this season? I'm incredibly ambitious about and everything that I go in to do. If I don't think if you go into something not wanting to be the best, then there's no point going into it. It's just the nature of how but I am. Would you accept that maybe you're below a level to some of the uh, uh, some wait. of the more? And I don't I don't mean established sides. Mm -hmm. I mean. The sides who have gone on a wee bit, why Glen Torn have slipped? Absolutely. Listen, I think a lot of people have enjoyed seeing us where we we're at, to be honest with you. you know, Glen Torn is so used to being up there. Uh, I said in the interview process that I felt Glen Torn had lost the fear factor. You know, there used to be that element whenever the Glens turned up and you were playing against them. You know, this, this is Glen Torn we're playing like. Do you mean they've got quality from 1 to 11 or 1 to 16, whatever like, do you mean? And, and they're all singing, all dancing. And, and they had that element of fear where they almost had teams beat psychologically before he turned up. Teams in the Irish League, have, the, the standard have, has really came on, so it has to... The, it's hard to know if the standard's gone up or the teams have just got become more equal, like, do you mean? but it's a lot harder. There used to be... I would say the Glens probably had about four or five games a year would have been a real, real challenge for them. Like, you mean home and away, four or five teams, I mean, sorry, would have been the real challenge. And the rest of the teams, they almost just turned up and then they would have taken them points. Whereas now, everybody's sort of capable of getting results off anybody else. You know, it's... The consistency, like Crusaders have obviously built from a position where they've built themselves up and it's been a slow process over the last 10 years for Stevie, 11 years, and they're reaping the benefit now where they've had success. With success comes European money. With European money means you can get a, maybe a higher, you can afford to kind of that higher standard of player. You can afford to carry extra players as well in terms of your, 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 your playing staff. You know, So when you go from having a really good core of 16, 16 players they can now really have a core of a good strong 20 players because they can a financially afford to have their extra players uh, and the, and they can attract them because of the success you know Linfield or Linfield you know they they've always had that money coming in and that that high turnover of, of revenue so they have because of the size of the club and everything else and and they could sustain that way you know so they can compete that way Cliftonville have had success over the last number of years and again they've built you know Glenavon again success through through Irish cups and that and then again they've built again so we need to be successful in order not there to get either European money or, or make us more competitive. Our biggest thing, I would say, has been the injuries have been a massive part of that. If you're not competitive in-house and, in, and within your own club, then you can't be competitive on a Saturday, I don't believe. like You need to have a competition that people a, aren't guaranteed their position, that they have to fight in training in order not there to be get that competitive bite about them. Like not being able to tackle each other isn't the way forward. You know, you want the people fighting and, and, and like create that match environment on a training night. Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, we've had that and slowly but surely it's been coming back and it's becoming more competitive and if people want to fight and that, like for good things and that on the training ground, even literally, it doesn't bother me. I enjoy that element. You know, I came from an era where you grew up with people like a Pat McAllister and a Tony Gorman, Garth McCauley's, like uh, Rory Hamill's, Jody Tolans, I grew up with them boys and see a training night, you come home black and blue, 
you know what I mean? But you knew you were involved in a good training session. Mm -hmm. Like it was almost like a match in on itself. And playing amongst ourselves now, they created that that match toughness that comes Saturday. We were ready for it, you know. Whereas I think probably teams nowadays are a wee bit more kind of wrapped in cotton wool. And, and I'm a bit more of that generation where I think you got to fight for what you want. And if these boys fight hard enough, they'll get what they want. I know you have a goal for Glen Tor long term to be right up there with the very best. But what is mm -hmm. your goal? Do you have a specific goal for this season? Or will you sit or hide behind almost the cliche of, I want the lads to develop, I want them to play with a football, be competitive. What is your actual uh, goal for this season? Top half, Adrian. We need to be in the top half. We need to be in them European playoff spots, three to six. So it is, you know, we were obviously a wee bit of drift not there, but a couple of wins soon brings you back in amongst it. You know, a couple more wins not then you're right back in the thick of things. But my ambition... I think you no know, top two, three, and that there would be a lofty ambition even for someone like, like you know to, to be reaching. But but why not? Like I mean, why not see how far we can go? How many points can we get between now and the end of the season? As ultimately the game, but I would be happy if we finish now three to six position in the playoff position, so we give ourselves a chance of European football. You know, club like Lintorn needs to be playing European football, needs to be up there challenging. It's what our fans expect. It's what they demand. You know, and and, and it's my role and that there at the club and that there to try and bring that. You know, so yeah, it, it's, it was tough given from where we started, like you mean, but a few wins, a bit of confidence, a buzz about the place. Like, I came in after Saturday's game and it was electric. You could feel it. You feel it in the dressing room. You could feel it upstairs amongst the fans. You could feel it in the boardroom, even. You know, like, you know they've got a buzz back, you know, because they've put a lot of hard work in. They've put, taken a lot of criticism over the last number of years, like, so they have. And they need wins as well. They need wins for confidence. They realise that they're doing the right thing, that they're heading in the right direction, that the club's heading in the right direction. And it wasn't going to be overnight success, of course it wasn't, but the, the hard work is starting to kind of hopefully pair dividends and that, and we'll we'll all try and get there together. You know, it's, I've, I've had great support from the club from, from the day and hour I've been in. It's the, the football side of things is my demand, it's mine to do what I, I want with, you know, within reason, obviously. They have to help me, support me by the players and stuff that we look to try and strengthen with, like, but the players have got the opportunity now because they've got the shirt in their back, they're in the squad, they've got the chance to impress me enough to stay at the club, you know, because that has to be their number one aim, is to make sure that... That was always my... Whenever I looked at it, I tried to put what, how I was as well back on them. My ambition every Saturday was to make sure I did enough to be in the team the following Saturday. That was it. Like, I mean, if I did my job, what the manager wanted me to do, I had to be a buffer approach. I had to be leading by example. You know, I had to kind of make sure that I did enough to make sure he thought I justified being in the team next week. And that's what they've got to do too, you know. And if they do that enough, then they'll stay next year and they'll stay beyond that, you know. So, so that's what the ambition is, is to make sure these boys realise what it's like to play for a club like Glentorn. Can I, I can see why uh, the board at Glentorn gave you the job. <laughs> and I think you're going to be back here. I wish you continued success with Glentorn. Pleasure to have you here, McLean's TV. Good Thanks to see you. Much. God Thank bless. You. Gentlemen.